Morning of the day, another real world test. Today, we're doing it on the new Google Pixel 6 Pro. Now, if you're not familiar, I'm gonna go through a day with this device. My SIM card's even in here, I'm using it as my real phone. And we'll talk about some of the features that I like and don't like, we'll check in on the battery, and we'll also take photos on it and some of its competitors, put them on the screen so you guys can see how it does. And of course, very curious how this camera will do. But you may notice, I'm not at home. In fact, I'm about an hour north of where I live in New York City, and I'm in a castle. Originally built in 1897 as a family home for General Howard Carroll, it was designed by a well-known New York architect at the time, Henry Kilburn, and it was made in a style reminiscent of a Scottish castle. And in 2013, it was renovated to what you see now. It's just a cool piece of like this Hudson Valley, New York history, and it's just, it's pretty. But we're here because there's somewhere nearby that I want to explore while we test out this phone. But before we get to all of that, first things first. Coffee, check. And this is Coffee Labs. It's a coffee shop and a roastery that started in 2003 and became one of the first third wave coffee shops in the New York metropolitan area. While we're here though, let's talk about this design. And it is a striking design as we've seen on the internet for a while now. But I have to say it looks better in person than it does in photos for sure. The camera bar is of course the first thing you notice and that feels pretty intentional. Google even mentioned in their presentation that they wanted to put a focus in the design on the cameras. And considering that the cameras of a Pixel phone have always kind of been arguably the most impressive part of a Pixel phone, that kind of checks out. And honestly, I think there's actually another intention to this. And that's to give the Pixel devices a very recognizable look. Just like how the iPhone kind of does this from the front with its notch. Now, as far as materials, the Pixel 6 Pro has a similar design to the 6 with the same black metal bar for that camera bar and then the options for a few different two-tone colors for the part above and below. Another difference in the design is that the frame around the 6 Pro is a polished metal versus the plastic of the Pixel 6. Honestly, they both feel really good and like more premium than any of the previous generations, recent generations of the Pixel have. So the Pro maybe like looks and feels just a little bit more premium. Part of that is thanks to like the slightly curved screen, which we'll talk about more in a sec, and also the metal sides. And we'll discuss more differences between the Pro and the regular 6 in a bit. But in terms of design, they both now just feel like proper flagships, like proper competition design-wise to the Samsungs and iPhones of the world. And if you want to protect that new design, or even negate the camera bar if you're not into it, we need to talk about today's sponsor, Rhino Shield. Now Rhino Shield makes cases that aren't just extremely impact protective, they also look good, and I also like that they're not bulky. They have their solid suit lineup, which is their no fuss protective case. It comes in a ton of designs, colors, and finishes. But they also have their modular Mod NX cases for iPhones, which allow you to mix and match a backplate with various case rim colors, but also swap out the backplate for a bumper case, if that's more your style. For the Pixel, they have a classic solid suit, but we have interchangeable power button colors, so you can get back that patented Pixel accent color on it if you want. They also have a ton of exclusive cases from NASA, PewDiePie, League of Legends, and a ton of others. You can even design your own case with your own images and text. They have cases for all the new iPhones, as well as many flagship Android phones too. They also ship worldwide and have free shipping for qualified orders, as well as a lifetime warranty for their cases. Head to the link in the description below to check out their cases and use discount code UNLOCKER for 20% off the first week after this video goes live and 10% off after that. Okay. And right now we're in Terrytown, which is a cute little town that is apparently very busy this time of year, which makes sense, which I'll explain later. But right now, let's head to the area that we're here for. <laughs> Now just a bit north of cute little Terrytown is Sleepy Hollow. 
Now, this was the setting for American author Washington Irving's short story published in 1820, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, where a Hessian soldier, the name for the German soldiers who fought alongside the British in the American Revolution, had lost his head to a cannonball, apparently, and was buried near here only to return as the headless horseman haunting the area, looking for a new head. And this area was originally, as Irving described it, a glen north of Terrytown. But it was officially incorporated as North Terrytown in the late 19th century, and then in 1996, they changed the name to Sleepy Hollow in honor of the story, which as Irving did live in Terrytown, took place here with the bridge he mentions at the end of the book just being down this road, along with this old Dutch church. Irving is even buried here in the 90-acre Sleepy Hollow Cemetery next to the church. And it's just a beautiful cemetery, and also massive. And it draws a ton of visitors, especially in October, this time of year. But while we're outside here, let's talk about the display. Now the Pixel 6 Pro has a slightly curved display compared to the flat one of the Pixel 6. It's not like Samsung levels of curve back in the day with accidental touches. It's just a subtle look difference and it doesn't functionally change the device. And that screen is a 6.7 inch 120 hertz QHD plus display versus the 6.4 inch 90 hertz FHD plus of the Pixel 6. Now they both have higher refresh rate screens and that just means that animations, scrolling, and games will look smoother and that the Pro can again hit 120 20 frames per second versus the 6's only 90 hertz. They're both AMOLED panels and the color and contrast is good and they're both bright enough for me to see in broad daylight which is really what I care about. We also have an in-display fingerprint sensor that's snappy and while I will miss the Pixel's patented rear one which I loved because of its placement but also because I used to use it to pull down notifications without touching the screen, I'll survive. And lastly for the screen, it's covered in Gorilla Glass Victus on both models so it should resist scratches as well as be more shatter resistant than Gorilla Glass 6 according to Corning, the manufacturer. Now for software, we're running Android 12 with Google's Material U UI on top of it, as they call it. The UI changes throughout the system based on the wallpaper that you choose using AI to determine primary and secondary colors. We also have a redesigned quick settings menu with larger buttons and a few new ones like the new camera and mic buttons that disable access to either, even if you gave the app permissions, sort of like a kill switch. And this also corresponds to the new green indicator at the top right for when the camera or mic are being used, and we also have some updated widgets and a new at a glance, which isn't just a widget on these phones, but sort of occupies the entire top. You can customize this section though, to show flight info, weather, when to leave to make it to an event, etc. And the idea is that it'll do all of these things at the right time based on usage, and of course, AI. We also have a new security hub and privacy dashboard to get a more succinct view of what's being accessed when, have more controls about it, and beyond that, at the end of the day, on a day-to-day -day basis, it feels like a Pixel feels. It just has a new UI, which I actually kind of appreciate, and uh, it's pretty smooth. the same time that Irving published his story, the Erie, Delaware, and Hudson Canals made it so a boat could get from the Atlantic Ocean all the way to the recently settled Midwest. And it's what populated all of these towns here, as much as they were, on the Hudson River, like Terrytown. Now because of this, a lot of lighthouses were built in the rougher parts of the river to help with navigating, including this one, which was lit in 1883, called the Terrytown Light, but now known as the Sleepy Hollow Lighthouse. It was originally much further offshore than it is now, and the first keeper of the lighthouse ended up becoming the mayor of North Terrytown, which is now Sleepy Hollow. Now it's been decommissioned since 1961, and in 1979 it was listed as a historic site. So now it just sits Chuck's positioned against the basically brand new by comparison Mario M. Cuomo Bridge built to replace the original Tappan Zee Bridge in 2017. And this being built as we speak, major waterfront development. The lighthouse is apparently safe though, as the county just in July committed funds to restore it to quote its former glory. You love to see it. It's just a kind of a chill spot to watch the sunset from. While we're here though, we can't really talk about these new phones without talking about the Tensor chipset inside. Google has designed their own silicon and called it 
Tensor, a nod to tensors, which are used in machine learning, and also TensorFlow, Google's own open source machine learning software library. Now, honestly, this isn't the first chip that Google has designed. They already make TPUs, or tensor processing unit, for machine learning applications in data centers. This is their first chip in the mobile space. If all that doesn't explain the main use for this chipset, it's basically about machine learning and AI tasks. Google essentially said in their presentation that current mobile processors couldn't keep up with the things that they wanted to do with their Google research division. And that's what sparked them to create their own, which is optimized to run Google's own machine learning models. The image signal processor now has some of the photo algorithms on the silicon itself to save power and make those run more efficiently. There's some low power machine learning things in the context hub portion of the chip for ambient computing things like that at a glance bar and basically they said that even though the CPU is 80% faster than the Pixel 5 and the GPU is 370% faster their biggest focus was on getting all the components to work well together efficiently a concept we've heard before called heterogeneous computing now it's pretty hard for me to check that what they're doing with this phone and this chipset couldn't be done on other chipsets or is running better on this chipset versus another because I just don't have the same exact phone with a different chipset to test it against but I can tell you that the phone feels super fast for everything that I do on it and the things that they mentioned that the chip enabled like better voice typing and the camera all seem pretty good too. Now the voice typing, which is the fastest way for me to always type on a phone, can now add commas, question marks, and other punctuation on its own based on machine learning, as well as spell names better based on your contacts. And something that seems obvious, but I never really thought of it until now, when you're using the voice typing, it'll use phonetics to determine what to correct to instead of key proximity. You can also say words like clear to erase the sentence and it doesn't type out clear. I tested it by saying clear in a sentence and that worked fine by the way. You can also say send to send the message. You can also now say emoji and it'll fill those in too. All in all, it's made voice typing something that I use a lot to save time that much more hands-free. So the next thing that Google claims the Tensor chip helps with that we need to discuss are the cameras. This looks busy. <laughs> this is the great jack-o'-lantern blaze. And it's at the Cortland Manor, about a 20 minute drive north of Sleepy Hollow. Now it's 7,000 hand-carved jack-o'-lanterns lit up and is one of the biggest Halloween inspired events in the country. This year, they even have a special New York City skyline and a massive Hudson River underwater scene. They also have a location on Long Island too, but to me, it just really seems like a good place to test the camera on the phone. And those cameras are kind of a big deal because even though Pixel phones have always been praised for their photos, the sensor hasn't changed much in years. All of the magic came from the software side, basically. This is the first time they put in a much more modern camera system. And we're all curious if they can use that, plus their already awesome software, to improve the situation even further. So firstly, the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro both have the same main camera. That is a 50 megapixel f1.85 aperture, one by 1.31 inch sensor that since the pixels are binned together by default, gives you 2.4 micron sized pixels. And all of that just means it can let in a lot more light and produce much better images, even without night mode, which the previous pixels had to use when there wasn't a lot of light or the limitations of that much smaller sensor showed in the very noisy images it produced. To also put this into perspective, converting the fraction number usually used for sensor sizes to something easier to compare, we get a 0.763 inch sensor. So a decent chunk larger than the iPhone 13 Pro's 0.606 inch sensor and a hair larger than the S21 Ultra's 0.751 inch. And that uses pixel binning of nine 0.8 micron sized pixels together to get the same 2.5 four micron sized ones after. Now that old sensor in the Pixel 5, 0.39 inches. So they didn't just bump it up, they almost doubled it and put it finally on par with other flagships. And it combined with the Pixel's usual computational photography, 
makes for some pretty impressive shots, actually. Now, if you're not familiar, the Pixel software in mine kind of takes what their algorithm thinks are just the most pleasing edits based on a ton of data that Google probably has that somebody would do to their photos after they took them, and it just does them instantly to the photo as you take it. Next, we have the ultra wide, which is also the same between the 6 and 6 Pro, and that's a 12 megapixel, 114 degree field of view, f2.2 aperture with 1.25 micron size pixels compared to the one micron ones on the Pixel 5. And while not as impressive as the main, it still does a pretty good job. My only gripe about it is that it's not really that wide. There just isn't a big enough field of view difference between it and the main camera. I find myself just not wanting to switch to it as much as I would if it were a little wider. Again, so that beats there, and it does a great job, but I wish it was a little wider. And lastly, the Pixel 6 Pro adds a third telephoto camera that is a four times optical zoom. That's a 48 megapixel half inch sensor that has 0.8 micron sized pixels. Those get binned together to get 1.6 micron sized ones. And I actually do find myself using the telephoto a lot because that four times optical zoom is a different enough focal length that it makes me feel like creatively I have different framing options. Now, in addition to that, we also have a slightly wider and larger sensor for the front facing camera than on the Pixel 6. And it also allows for 4K video on the front versus the 1080p on the 6. Speaking of video, that's another place that the much smaller sensors of the Pixels before tended to show their limitations again. These much more modern sensors do a much better job of video in general. But also, Google claims now that because of the Tensor chip, they can actually use similar photo algorithms on their video by basically doing that to each frame up to 60 frames per second instantly. So we can shoot in 4K 30 on all of the cameras and 4K 60 on only the main one with what feels like a digital zoom up to seven times, but maybe it's using some data from the telephoto to help. Eh, it's hard to tell. gonna grab a quick bite, but before we do, the battery is basically dead. It is 10.34 p.m. and we are at 2%. And here's my screen on time and my usage for anyone who's curious about that. Also, the Pixel does the annoying thing where it's the last 24 hours of battery usage, so that includes when I was actually using it still yesterday. So, we have to remove all of this from all of this. Now, considering I took it off the charger at 9 a.m., it is now 10.30 p.m., and I used the camera a ton, video a ton, it's a real-world test, these are not normal days, that's pretty good. Also, though, here is another day that was not a real-world test day, and the usage and screen on time and the math required to figure out what actually happened, etc. But I brought a battery pack, so let's charge this up and keep going. This is a restaurant called the Hudson Anchor. It's a cute little seafood spot right next to the lighthouse that we saw earlier. And it was opened in 2018 by a woman who was born in Guyana, raised in Jamaica and Queens Village, and moved to the area about nine years ago. She was previously a pharmaceutical scientist. So, you know, a nerdy foodie, I like it. And while we're here, let's talk about some of the interesting software for the cameras. We have our usual stabilization for video that we've seen on other pixels, along with the two times locked mode active mode and cinematic pan, which shoots without audio at 60 FPS and automatically drops that down to 30 FPS to get a half speed slow motion. And of course we have portrait mode, time-lapse and slow-mo and night sight, obviously. But we now, again, according to Google, thanks to the Tensor chip, have a motion mode with two options. Action pan, which is meant to create the look catching a moving subject while the moving background blurs in the direction of the movement, but doing so with software. And we also have a way of mimicking a long exposure shot in which movement happening in the image is blurred. You've probably seen this with car headlights or light painting when someone sits a camera on a tripod for a long time with a long exposure. This instead only takes a second or two and then mimics that using software again that senses the direction of the movement instead. 
Now besides those, Google also showed off another Tensor exclusive feature called Magic Eraser that automatically detects potentially unwanted objects or people in the photo using machine learning and then allows you to tap them to the remove them and have the software try and fill in the background. You can also circle items that it didn't detect to have it try and figure out the outline of the item and then tap to remove those as well. And normally I would do this in Snapseed on my phone or Lightroom on my computer to remove small distractions from photos, but it's not easy to do on items that are large and especially with complicated things behind them. Now, as with all of these types of edits, it only works really well when the background behind the object is easy to fill in. So when the item crosses over to different backgrounds, for example, that becomes a lot harder. And the AI here also has a hard time with that as well, obviously. Now you can also use this on past photos that you took, even if they weren't taken on a pixel at all. This one was on an iPhone 13, but at least right now you can only use the feature in Google Photos on a Pixel 6 or 6 Pro. Now I will say, obviously it gets it wrong when it's complicated, but I am impressed at how close it gets sometimes without me having to manually outline items like I would in a professional program. All right, these guys are everywhere. They're literally every two like street poles. I want to know what the story is. But there you go. Calling it a night. Obviously, this is a big leap for Pixel and I think they did a pretty good job. And the Pixel 6 is only $599 and at $599 for all of the things we just talked about that the Pixel 6 has in common with this phone, it's a hard phone to beat, honestly. This model is $899, which is still a good deal for a flagship phone, especially with all these features and all the things we just talked about. The only question I really have is, is all of that worth an extra $300? You guys let me know in the comments below if you think it is or isn't, and also what you guys think of the Pixel 6 Pro and this video, doing it in my little weird format. Hope you guys enjoy it. Otherwise though, as always, thanks for watching.